Uh, well, my name's uh, John Thurn, and I'm privileged to be the National Medical Advisor for the Royal Life Saving Society Australia. I'm also, uh, through uh, the international world of Royal Life Saving, on the International Life Saving Federation on the Medical Committee as, we as, as well. Yeah, in my other life, I'm the uh, Senior Professor of Children's Medicine based at the Royal Children's Hospital in Brisbane, where I've been a senior academic for the last 45 years. Well, for me personally, uh, as a clinician, uh, dealing with uh, the tragic aftermath and talking with parents and supporting them who've br had a toddler, a sodden toddler, rushed into the emergency room, who hasn't responded to resuscitation, who is truly dead, uh, that's a terrible thing and it affects staff, it affected me and uh, one just can't stand aside from that knowing that these are preventable injuries. Well, uh, my involvement with uh, the world of drowning prevention, safety promotion for, for children, really started uh, some 40 years ago when uh, the, uh, the new development of in-ground swimming pools hit the, the Western and affluent world. Uh, what happened was that um, uh, the new engineering techniques of reinforced concrete and also of fiberglass technology uh, in the late 1960s caused an explosion of uh, in-ground swimming pools. And this was followed by a, a tragic and major epidemic of toddler drownings, particularly backyard drownings. And in my own case, uh, as uh, then, uh, 40 years ago, uh, as a, a consultant, paediatrician and neurologist, um, I was suddenly faced with an epidemic of uh, major child drowning. In my own city, the city of Brisbane, the major city then of a million people, uh, a toddler was being fished out of the, the water in a backyard water hazard, uh, dead or apparently dead, once every week. And uh, this meant that the mortality from toddler drownings uh, exceeded the death of children from uh, pneumonia and leukaemia and cystic fibrosis and gastroenteritis and car injuries uh, all combined. Uh, from the 1970s uh, and in the 1980s with colleagues uh, in Australia in the Royal Life Saving Society we worked very closely with getting out the preventive message and the promotion of water safety. Um, injury prevention can be uh, targeted using an educational or public outreach approach, it can be targeted using better equipment like in the case of road safety, uh, crash helmets and seat belts to reduce injuries on the roads, but ultimately by enforcing regulation to promote safety, particularly to protect the vulnerable in society. And uh, very much in the work of the Royal Life Saving Society, this means, of course, regulation and legislation to ensure a safe water environment for children. Well, there's been very dramatic reduction in uh, uh, injuries, water-related injuries. Um, the messages of water safety and drowning prevention, particularly as these apply to children, have had very dramatic effects. In my own city, the city of Brisbane, uh, as I mentioned, in 1975, there was a, a child being pulled, rescued from the water, dead, unfortunately, or apparently dead, once every week. Uh, now, in the last uh, 18 months, there has not been one toddler drowning in a backyard, water hazard, particularly a swimming pool, in that city at all. Mm -hmm.